obviously the Ilun Ishma de Borafege Bat Shemuel or the Rabbi Shemuel. Estat Katavon Kafani and Menachem Mendel Ben El Hanan. You know, I would like to start. Uh, there was a rabbi. He was Rosh Shivat Kamenitz. There is a very important yeshiva here in here in the U.S. It's called Yeshivat Kamenitz. And he, say, he says over a story that happened to him when he was a child. He says that when he was a child, he got very, very sick. And uh, obviously, the whole entire family and all the community were praying for, for his refua. He says that one day his dad, his father comes up to him and he tells him, Son, everybody's praying for you. Everybody are making Tehillim, they're learning Torah from you, everything. But what are you doing for yourself? Are you praying? Are you doing something special? Now, for your understanding, the kid was six years old. <laughs> so he looked at his dad and he says, Daddy, <laughs> what do you want me to do? I don't know how to do, you know, learning Torah, extra hours. I'm a child. And then he said, that his father took him, he sat, he sat down with him for two hours, and he explained to him the concept of taking on, uh, upon himself a Kabbalah. You know what's a Kabbalah? Taking upon himself one thing to change. And he told him, son, what, whatever you're going to take, I want you to know that you're going to take it for all your life. So the son again looks at his dad and he says, Daddy, I'm ready to do it, but I need your help. And the dad told him, I want you to take on yourself one Kabbalah for all your life that you will be doing the effort every single day to pray Shaharid with the Minyan. Now, you know, a lot of people, when they are in uh, need, Whatever, whatever they want to, you know, change the, the decree, they accept on themselves very quick. Happened to us many times, especially Rosh Hashanah Kippur. Rosh huh? Hashanah Kippur, we come, Bore Olam, this year, halas. This year, every day, Shaharin Khari, every day, learning to that, five hours, every day, Tefillin. What happened? And then they will remember exactly. In the middle of the year, not even the middle of the year, already, you know, the beginning of the year, we forgot exactly how was it. And But the father told this, this kid, my son, whatever you're going to take, I want you to take it, knowing that you're going to accept it on yourself for the whole entire life. Rabotai, the kid, Baruch Hashem, got healed. He became a great rabbi, Rosh Hashivat Kremenitz. One day, he comes back. You know, as being, being a Rosh Hashiva, it's not easy, especially when you have to maintain the yeshiva and you have to get the money. So sometimes, Rosh Hashiva, they must travel to different countries to get money. He said that this rabbi had to travel to collect money for his yeshiva. He calls up the travel agency, and he tells him, I need to get from Israel to the U.S. He says, no problem. We have a flight, good price, flying from Tel Aviv at 4, 4 a.m., you know, and uh, you will get there, I don't know, maybe 3 p.m. He says, the problem is, there is a minyan. Can you promise me that there will be minyan in the plane? And the travel agency looks at the rabbi, rabbi, what do you want from me? I can promise you kosher food. I can promise you, you know, a comfortable chair. Minyan. Minyan in the, the, the plane, not possible. He says, so if that's not the case, I'm not taking the, the flight. Please give me another flight. He says, rabbi, let me check. I got a flight for you with a stop connection in Holland. Netherlands it's called? Holland? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I got Amsterdam. 
I got a connection for you there. 8 a.m. you will get there. And the best not the shell. We hope that you will find Minyan. The rabbi says, sounds good. I will go for it. Says the rabbi, I am taking the flight the whole night. I arrive 8 a.m. to Amsterdam. Now, I don't speak uh, whatever they speak over there. And I don't barely English and whatever. Says the rabbi, I was praying to God, and I told him, Bore Olam, 70 years, 70 years, I never missed one day minyan of shaharid with the minyan. Never. God, do me a favor. Do with me, I said, help me out to find a minyan of shaharid. He says that he's leaving, he has a few hours of connection, he's leaving the airport, and he's looking around. I don't know, maybe we'll see a Jew something. All of a sudden, there is a car that, that stops by, takes up down the window, a Jew inside, and says, Rabbi, are you looking for Minyan? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for Minyan. Come, we're going for Shaharit. And the Rabbi went inside the car of the Jew. They arrived to the shul. There were eight people waiting together with him and the driver at 10. They finished a harit, and the guy that drove him, he asked him, Rabbi, you want, uh, are you staying here, or are you going back to the airport? Because uh, the truth is that I have to go back to the airport. I take you. And he took him back, and he was able to get there on time, even to take a cup of, uh, a cup of coffee before the flight. When he came back to his yeshiva, he told the students, guys, what, are you, what, what do you think I'm telling you this story? Just a nice story? I'm telling you the story because whatever happened to me is whatever the Gemara promise to each one of us. It's a promise. Whoever wants to get pure and holy and you're doing effort for that, but Olam is promising you, I'm helping you, Tzadik. I but you're going to have moments of challenge. You're right. But if you really want it, Bore Olam is going to show you the, the help. I want to tell you, there is a Gemara. I, I didn't have the time to, to look at the Gemara inside. There is a Gemara, I believe, about Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir, somebody came up to him and he asked for him money. So Rabbi Meir asked him, what's your name? And he told him his name. And throughout the name, Rabbi Meir knew exactly that this guy... It's not a righteous guy. His money is not righteous money. He told him, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to give you the money. Forget about it. Says the Gemara, the rabbi decided to keep up this money in a certain place where this guy will not find it. Where he decided to put the money? In the freezer. In the freezer? I have a better for you. In a cemetery. <laughs> in a cemetery. In the mattress. Yeah. <laughs> to put it in a cemetery, you know, for sure this guy will not find anything. No money. Who is going to the cemetery? The Gemara writes, Rabotei a Gemara. And we will have to understand why the Torah is so, is even such an importance to this story. The Gemara writes that Rabbi Meir, Whatever rabbi he was, he put the money in the cemetery. And after one or two days, this other guy has a dream from his dad. Telling him, Ruhi, I got a surprise for you. Happy birthday. What is it? I got you money. You go to the cemetery. This in this place. Go, dig. You're going to find the money. And the Gemara writes that this man woke up and next morning he went to the cemetery, he dig at the right place and he found the money of the rabbi. That's the story. Comes Rav Deslev and he writes in his book, Mikhtab, and he has something unbelievable, fantastic. So Rav Deslev, do you know why the Gemara tells those stories? You know why? Because Gemara wants to teach us 
that not only for Kedusha, not only for mitzvot, when you really want to fulfill a mitzvah, God is going to help you. Same thing happened in the opposite. When a guy wants to do an avera, when a guy wants to do something that it's not correct and he's pushing for it, but the Olam is going to tell you, no problem, God. No problem. I open it for you. I'm going to help you out. And there is a Midrash that the Mikhtar Meniao writes, another famous Midrash. The Midrash writes a similar story about a guy that was a drunk guy, addicted to alcohol. And he was drinking and he was acting, mechila for the word, like an animal. Throwing himself in the middle of the streets. Throwing up. All the kids were making fun of him. The sons of this man said, oh, listen, that's not a deal. Our father, you know, he's looking like they decided one of those days is going to drink and drink. They're going to take the guy half drunk or fully drunk, and they're going to put it in the cemetery. And over there, he's not going to find any wine until he will woke up in the middle of the night. He will realize, he will be scared, and he will stop drinking. Says the Midrash, the kids of this man pick up the guy, they put him in the cemetery. One day, two days, three days, they don't, they don't see the, the, the father. You know, maybe the father passed away, Kaddish. So before Kaddish, we should uh, be sure, they decided to go to the cemetery to see what's going on. Two days, whatever. It's a midrash. They go to the cemetery and they find his dad drinking, having a barrel of wine, huge barrel of wine right next to him. Happy, laughing, making stuyot. I can't believe the eyes. In the cemetery, you brought wine. And the Midrash writes, the story was that that same day that they put the father in the cemetery, there was another guy that stole a barrel of wine. And it seems to be they were running after him, police, I don't know what. He had no choice. He decided to take the barrel and to throw it the other side of the fence of the cemetery. Where did the barrel fall? Exactly at the legs of this guy. Says Rav Desret, here you have another proof. The way that a person wants to go, but Olam is going to take you in that path, is only depending on you. Depends how much you really want to get to something. You want to get something, you're going to reach to it. I think I told you this. I'm going to repeat anyways. Because it's mechazek. I told you that the, we have one of the greatest rabbis in our generation. The Borelem will give him long life and health. His name is Rokhaim Kanievsky. This great rabbi, I believe, every single religious Jew that goes to Israel, you know, tries to pass by to get a bacha from the Gedodot. Correct? When I was in Yeshiva, I used to have one of my rabbis that he told me that he learned together with the rabbi at school. Together with the Chaim Kenesi, they learned together at school, in Yeshiva. And he told me, you don't understand. I remember him as a child. Rav Chaim Kenesi was the worst kid at class. Not in behavior, in understanding. He wasn't able to get one Mishnah, one Gemara, nothing. He told me, and you see today, is the greatest Talmud Hacham in the generation. Every single year, he finished up, every year, not every seven, every year, he finished up the whole Shaz Bavli, the whole Shaz Yerushalmi, all the four Halkesh Ruchan Aruch, with Shach Tas all the Beit Yosef, he finished all the Tosef, all the, it's not enough, you want to continue? Every single year, he does siyum of the whole entire Torah. (coughs) 
and he tells me, do you know what's the secret? What was the secret of the rabbi? How he became what he is today. He told me, like I told you, it's class. He wasn't getting one word. But when he was coming back from school, his dad, his dad was the stipler. He used to take him, sit down, let's review. They were reviewing. He told me they were repeating the learning at least 20 times every single day. Twenty times. He says the greatest thing is not about the father. The great thing is about the child. You know what, what is a child that he have all his friends playing soccer outside? And he had to stay next to his dad? All the kids are playing, they're having all type of programs and prizes, and he has to stay with his dad? He says, guess what? That effort that this child show that he's ready to do and to sacrifice whatever he wants. Automatically, they open up the gates. And what Olam showed, not to him, to all of us, what is the power of a person that is ready to do an effort for Akadosh Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu Amen. Amen.